Hi, welcome to Physics Teacher. In this video, I'm going to go over a lab that I do with my grade 11 physics students, where we use a slinky to investigate the property of waves. Now, there's four parts to this lab. If you want a copy of the lab handout, you can download it for free in the description. And once we've done that, we'll get started with the lab. Alright, so from this point, I've stretched the slinky a distance of approximately 5 meters. And you can check that with the rulers that I've placed on the floor here. And the first part of the lab is to compare the speeds of a transverse wave and a longitudinal wave. Let's sort of first go over the difference. A transverse wave will have the particles vibrate perpendicular to the direction of the wave that the wave moves in. So I've placed a little uh, blue tape in the middle of the slinky. So you can see when I make a transverse wave like this, this would be a transverse wave. It's actually a standing wave, but a standing wave is this standing wave is a transverse wave. And you can see the blue tape vibrating perpendicular to the direction that the wave travels. A longitudinal wave looks like this. So you can see that tape moving parallel to the direction the wave travels. So, part one, which one's faster? So what we're going to do is I'm going to send a pulse, and you can use the video to measure the time it takes the pulse to go five meters and five meters back. We'll do it a couple times and you can take the average time. All right, so first, transverse wave. Three, two, one, Okay, just check the time for when it goes there and back. That's it. Do it again. Three, two, one. And one last time. Three, two, one. All right. Now let's check the time to travel five meters there and five meters back for a longitudinal wave. Ready? Three, two, one. Again, three, two, one. And one more time, three, two, one. And it's a little bit hard to see, but I'm trying to show you the motion with my fingers when it goes there and back. So one more time, three, two, one. All right. Now that has an application with earthquakes because uh, earthquakes will have a longitudinal wave hit you before its transverse wave hits you. So depending how far you are from the epicenter will be um, how long of a warning you have until the, the stronger one actually hits. All right. Now the second part of the lab, we're going to measure speed as well, but we're going to see how speed changes as tension changes in the slinky. So we're just going to do transverse waves, but I'm going to start by reducing the tension. So now the length of the slinky is only three meters long. So let's start by measuring the speed here. So three meters there and back. So a total difference of 6 meters, measure the time, calculate speed, distance over time. 3, 2, 1. Okay, again, 3, 2, 1. And 3, 2, 1. All right, now I'm going to stretch the spring to a distance of 4 meters. So four there and four back. Let's figure out the time and calculate the speed. Three, two, one. And three, two, one. And one more time. Three, two, one. And then we'll stretch it even more. Uh, we've already done five meters in part one, so let's go all the way to six meters. All right, so I'm at six meters. 
Three, two, one. And three, two, one. And three, two, one. Notice that the amplitude of the wave does decrease over time, and that's just due to loss of energy from friction. But the speed should remain the same. As the energy of this wave is proportional to its amplitude. All right, so I'm back to five meters, and the next part of the experiment is more of a qualitative experiment. Notice that I have the slinky tied to that table, so it's fixed. That end cannot move. I'm going to create a transverse wave where the wave pulse is going to be over here. And I want you to look to see where it is reflected to. Does it reflect an inversion of the wave coming back, or does it stay on the same side? Let's take a look. Three, two, one. Did you see? Just one more time. Three, two, one. All right, so now to simulate a free end reflection, you can see I tied a long piece of string so that the end of the slinky is free to move back and forth. It's not fixed in that location. So now I want you to see, don't worry about the wave passing through the string. I want you to look at the wave as it's reflected back on the slinky when it hits the string. I'm gonna create the pulse on this side. Is it gonna come back on this side? Or is it going to get inverted? Let's watch. Right, did you see? Let's try again. Three, two, one. All right, so the last part of the experiment, I'm going to create a standing wave. So I can do that because I have a fixed end over there. And so the identical wave will come back and interfere with the waves I'm going to produce. And I'm going to create ones that have two antinodes, three antinodes, and four antinodes. And we're going to compare the speeds of the waves for each one. Now to do that, we're going to need to use the universal wave equation, where speed is frequency times wavelength. So first, when I create two antinodes, like this, notice one full wavelength is the entire five meters. So in this case, a wavelength is five meters. How are you going to figure out frequency? You're going to look at my hand. So we're going to count and time 10 cycles. A full cycle is back and forth. And once you've timed 10 cycles, you can figure out frequency. All right, so let's start. I'm going to start at zero, and we're going to count. Ready? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right? Now, if I create three antinodes, that's one and a half wavelengths. One and a half wavelengths in five meters. So you can do the math there to figure out exactly what one wavelength would be if one and a half is five meters. And then we're going to figure out the frequency by doing 10 cycles and timing it. So let me get this right first. All right, there we have three. So I'll start at zero and zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four antinodes is going to be a trick. <laughs> All right, but if we have four antinodes, that's two full wavelengths in a distance of five meters. So knowing that, you can calculate what one wave wavelength would be, which would be half of five meters. Um, and then we're going to have to go really quickly uh, to figure out where the frequency is. See if I can count that fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if I can get four antinodes here. There we go. Is that four? Yep. So, zero, five.
zero, five, ten. Whew. Couldn't count that fast, but I managed to say zero, five, and ten. <laughs> All right, you could also watch the video in slow motion and check out my hands to do something more accurate there. And I will not be doing five empty notes. Don't know if I even could. Well, let's see. Nope, not gonna be doing five anti notes. <laughs> All right, so that's it for our lab on waves. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss the next experiment. And if you have any questions about this experiment, let me know in the comments. Or if you have any experiments you wanna see me do, um, as long as I have the equipment, I will try and do it. You can let me know that in the community tab. Thanks for watching.